What's up, Devils? J Dog back here for another video. And today's video is going to be topics going to be <clears throat> called uh, bands jumping ship. And I thought this was a really good topic because somebody left in the comments the questions, and I'll give you a goddamn shout out here. Bring up on my phone. It was a pretty long question, but detailed. I was like, oh, that's actually a really good topic. Uh, and yeah, I'll definitely have uh, something to say about it. So let's no further ado. Go right to it from Patrick Frat Antonio. I'm going to pronounce that okay for you, bra bra. J Dog, what is the reaction when a band moves from HHH, HHB to another larger, more major, or more mainstreamish label? Do you regard it matter of factly as that's just business, or does HHB try to offer a similar kind of package to the band, or do you negotiate some shared rights to? release a limited edition vinyl or what. I'm thinking specifically of a band like Midnight. <laughs> yes, yeah, first band comes to my mind too. Going to Metal Blade. Knowing Athnar is a friend of the HHB label, have there been other occurrences? Uh, yep, there have. Is it a difficult situation to navigate? Does HHB get into a bidding war or does HHB just say fuck it and move on? So, um, yeah, I mean, it's all, um, I don't think there's ever been like, I mean, at the end of the day, no matter what the case would be, I would be like, yeah, it's just business. I mean, if a band wants to move on, I mean, it's they're 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 afraid they're free to do whatever the hell they want. Uh, for the one that you're probably wondering, most people wanted the most at midnight. Um, yeah, I, I wasn't. I mean, it was kind of like, ah, oh, that stinks. But I mean, because uh, midnight being the top selling band, I wasn't like pissed though. I was like, yeah, Jamie's definitely a good friend of mine, and uh, you know, I understand from that his point of view why he wanted to. His actually reason from. Uh, what I remember it coming across as is he just wanted to say that he put out a, a record on Metal Blade Records because him growing up as a kid, they did they put out a lot of albums that he that he's a fan of, right? You know, fucking Slayer Shuttle Mercy, for example, is on Metal Blade Records. So it's kind of a, a just a nostalgic thing to say, hey, my band was on a fucking label. Because J uh Athar Jamie, he's actually a really uh big fan of metal music still. He still uh collects records and uh he's he's an older guy. He's uh, about I think he's ten years older than me. And like I've always said before, the old heads, most of these guys, they, they don't even listen to metal anymore. They just flat out don't. At best, they listen to some of the bands that they grew up on. Outside of that, they're listening to classic rock and the fucking radio. That's just that's literally just the way it is. Um, 90% of the guys that are over the age of 40, just flat out the way it is. So, um, yeah, he's actually one. He literally buys records still. He comes down to Hell's Headbangers and buys shit. I mean, he's still generally a big, big music fan. So, you know, for him, he wanted to say that a, a label that he you know, grew up buying lots of albums that he loves by, uh, that he was on. So I could totally understand that. I get it. You know, no hard feelings. I wasn't, it's just kind of like, oh, that kind of stinks. But, um, he's actually he talked to me a couple of times too. He actually wants to, I think that maybe the next record is he's got a few albums written that he wants to do another album with hells again. Just kind of like, yeah, he did the metal blade thing. And so, yeah, so hell, it sounds like we might even be doing another minute record. I'd be all for it. So yeah, I, I wasn't pissed. It's just kind of a little bit of a bummer, but definitely understand. So, um, yeah, so there wasn't no really no, I don't really know what Metal Blade offered him or anything like that over us. Not that I would even get into that. I wouldn't like discuss his personal business, but um, yeah, uh, but I, I definitely get it. So I mean, we've had other scenarios like we were talking about bid wars. Yeah, we kind of had that with uh, Acid Witch. Um, Relapse was trying to sign them, so uh, I don't know if it was a, I don't know if it was a bid war, but it was uh, basically they contacted us before the last album came out. The Evil Sound Screamers, the uh, Relapse is supposed to put that out. They made them an offer, and basically, we just said that we would we match the offer. Maybe we would do a little bit more or whatever. Match it or better. And um, so, yeah, they stayed with us. And, you know, because, like, you know, you know, Dave, Slash Dave is a friend of ours and stuff like that. But, again, if the offer was from Relapse, was it, it, was, a, it was a pretty good offer. So, like, if he would have left for that, I'd be like, you know, I understand. You know, money talks, bullshit walks. You know what I mean? Friends or not, you know, he's got to do what's best for him and his fucking – his family and his life, right? I mean, that's his, it's, it's his time. It's his project. It's his band. It's his, I don't know if he's trying to do it as a living or not. I think he has a day job. I, I'm not really fully sure. Um, pretty, I'm pretty sure he has a day job. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't really know what he does outside the band. I, I know, I know I've asked him, but I can't remember. I said, no, he's done stuff like, like, like music stuff. For like if he's even in like, it was, uh, what was some show or movie or something. And he's, I know he does other stuff. He's a creative guy. So I don't really know what else he does, but nonetheless, you know, it's his band. He's free to do it as, as he wants. Um, so, yeah, that was kind of like the closest thing to, well, uh, I guess a bid war, if you want to call it. 
So the Apple with them and obvious is Acid Witch. Um, Nun Slaughter, you always stayed with us for all their albums we did. Um, that was just a friend thing. And uh, I know Don hates dealing with most labels because they're just fucking knobs and they're hard to deal with. So I think he likes just kind of like, hey, if I can get this, this is what I like for an album. And if I can get this deal, it's just rather stay with us for convenience, knows us and liability. Now he does do a lot of like off one off releases, uh, like a seven inch or cassette limited release with all with fucking tons of various labels. And that's just kind of like um, his thing on that is like um, is literally just having his music all in, put out in different countries, you know, just all around the world, which is, you know, cool because he's. He's got that obviously still very underground mentality to where like, you know, seven inches of demo tapes and kind of spread it the old school way, not this fucking digital download, you know, bullshit fucking that's going on, you know? So he's got the, you know, just the 80s mentality, which is, this is awesome. And that's the way it should be. So yeah, nothing, no problems there. Try to think, um, I know there was um, some scuttlebutt behind fucking Inquisition. Um, we, when we were putting out their stuff, the uh, Ominous Doctrones and the, uh, into the infernal, like the digi packs and those Tommy records, and we were working with them. Um, I think whatever they, we were supposed to do, whatever was next in line, I forget the full story, but who they end up going with? Season of the Mist, I believe it was. And uh, there was a little bit of controversy around that. I don't know about controversy. I know like Chase was definitely like, ah, you know, pissed or whatever. And and then there was that whole uh, media crap about one of the guys. What did he have? Pornography or some shit? I don't, I don't, I don't even know. I don't really get in the guy, the girl drama. I just remember it and kind of like. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously it's, it didn't look good. And what did it come out? It wasn't even a, the, the news come out. It's not even as bad as they thought and what nobody cares anymore. So everybody's got a 30 second memory. I don't remember, but there was that shit surrounding it too. So it was kind of like, maybe it was a blessing in disguise at the time. But I mean, I mean, Inquisition, what put out a record, what a couple months ago, we got it in. And then what was it on Agonia records or season of the mist? Uh, I, I think see, I want to say the fucking LPs and season we got from Argonia. So I don't even know what their current contract is, but it's not with us, obviously. And um, I don't know, whatever the hell his charges were or whatever people are accusing him. I don't even know if he's guilty. I don't even fucking know. Apparently people forgot about it and don't give a shit because I haven't heard a whisper about it. I just remember, it seems like with all that drama crap, like, because I don't have Facebook or any of that other, or Twitter or not this, to just now sign up, obviously started this YouTube this year. I don't have any of the social media shit. So I, unless people tell me about it, I don't, yeah, I don't know. I don't follow the drama. I don't like yeah, I don't, I don't follow any of it. So <laughs> unless people tell me, and when, usually when I hear about all this drama crap, I don't, um, I don't ask about it. I just, I don't, whatever. I don't, I don't, cause I don't really care. So, um, then moving to season of miss. Um, yeah, I mean, whatever it was, what it is, you know, um, I don't think there was a bid war or anything like that. I forget even why they, uh, jump shipped. I don't even remember why I'm assuming it's, I'm assuming it's money, you know, whatever they, uh, were offered. Uh, it might've been money or, um, cause one thing we don't really offer is like touring. We don't do that. We just put out the, uh, release and that's it. What's the touring thing is, when a band's, because we have some bands that ask about that, which is kind of like, you don't really need a label for that because a lot of the uh, labels, from what I understand, they just hire um, an a outside company to do it for it anyways. It's not like, you know, whoever at um, Season of the Mist, I don't even know who owns that company or whatever. It's not like he's sitting there fucking setting up tours and doing all that. He just has some guy that needs some, some booking agency he just sends it to. So it's like, you guys could easily do it. Just hire a booking agency to set up your shit and that that's it. They give you the date. I mean, they'll do the work for you. I mean, obviously there's a fee or whatever, but that's just kind of what it is. I mean, like, so you don't really need a label for that part. The label is just to put out your physical format shit. So A, you don't have to fund it. And B, when you do have it, you don't have to sit there and move all these fucking goddamn copies because funny is people are like, oh, I got, oh, yeah, I can put out a, like, I hear it all the time. Like, people are like, oh, I'm thinking about putting out a record. I'm thinking about putting out a CD. Yeah. Yeah. If you hit, for like, for example, a CD, if you have a thousand dollars, you, anyone can put out a CD. You can put out a thousand CDs. Sure. Number one, are you going to be able to move them? And number two, that's a pain in the ass. How are you going to move them? You gonna sell them online? If so, the, I sure hope you like uh, packaging stuff. Sure hope you like running the post office every day. So if you never done it, like, uh, do you have a set? You now you gotta go get packing supplies and different types of mailers because you're like, oh, well, I'll sell one CD. What if somebody buys five of them? It's not gonna fit the same mailer. Now you gotta get two different mailers. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, what if someone wants to do a trade for like 25? Now you gotta get a different separate box. Like, you, which these materials you don't have, and then you gotta run to the post office and you're working a day job and. And uh, you're assuming people even know who the hell you are. I mean, I'm, I'm with things like Facebook and shit like that, I'm sure you can retail some of your own stuff. But the bottom line is, is best case scenario, even if you can move them yourself because you're you're popular on social media or whatever, and you have a, a following, it's going to be a lot of work that you're probably not going to want to do. Yeah, if you have a social media following, if you have a thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah, you sure you can put on a CD. Of course you can. Any anyone can. Uh, it's, it's not rocket science by any fucking means. A, any sixteen year old kid could do it. 
That's how we started off doing. Um, it's just, yeah, do you have the means and to, to, to move it? And do you, do you want to do all deal with all that bullshit? So that's kind of where the label comes in, puts it out for you. And you just, you just get your percentage or whatever, whether it be money, copies, combination of both. And uh, your stuff's out. You don't have to worry about getting rid of it. You don't have to worry about sitting out of it. You don't have to worry about storing it. You don't have to worry about shipping it. You don't have to worry about, um, you know, you'd have a better chance of more copies moving because you're dealing with an actual company that's moving on. Because like for us, for example, we do, we like to trade a lot because we, we're not just a label, as you guys know, we're a distro as well. So we trade with all other distros around the world. So your stuff is getting up on a, you're getting your stuff everywhere. You know what I mean? Like your, your stuff will be over in places like Thailand and Japan and South America. It's going to get over there because we trade with labels over there. So that's, you know, those are the perks of why you would want to be on a, a label and a reputable label. That's what we'd have to offer. But uh, the bigger boys like, yeah, Relapse and Metal Blade and shit like that, it's more so, I guess, just the only other thing they kind of have to offer is just because they're, they're, there's a bigger name. And it's, you know, they're a bigger name because, you know, they, they did over the years, they have bigger bands. And quite frankly, some of them are kind of like, what the hell bands? Like, well, what, I mean, it's funny because I've looked at like some of the, um, I haven't looked at Relapse where this lost. I know they kind of cleaned it up over the years a little bit when they were still putting out more shit where it's like, okay, they're actually putting on some, some, some real metal again, like gruesome and exhumed and stuff like that. But uh, there was, there was a stretch where like, what the, like literally everything on this label is junk. And uh, I remember Reaper showed me a couple of years ago, the current roster station. Do you even realize what like metal blade puts out these days? So, yeah, you know, they put out King diamond and cannibal. And I was like, you know, they put out six feet under realms, which who likes later six feet under realms. I don't know. But I mean, I know that they put those out. So those are the bands I know of. Right. He's like, dude, he's like, there's shit like, he's like, you wouldn't even believe. And he showed me their website. And I'm like, holy fuck. I didn't realize they were putting out like, uh, like just shit where you're like, what, what the fuck is this? Like, th this is, is this even metal? Like, uh, which guys wearing dresses and shit and just like, oh my, like, yeah, you go look at it if you ever want to get a good laugh. So it's kind of like, that's what a lot of the bigger labels are doing. I'm sure Central Media is doing this. I think I did see Central Media's roster too. I think it's a beyond a fucking joke too, if I remember correctly. Um, it's kind of the way it is. So like, um, uh, yeah, if people want to go with those, it's just cause they're just, I don't know. It's almost kind of like they're getting towards Sony status. You know, they're just a commercial label. It's not really, in my opinion at this point, not really even a, a metal label anymore. It's just a big commercial company that's just ran by some corporation, you know? So from a business perspective, if somebody wants to jump shit and go there, I, I, I get it, you know, more eyeballs, you know, you know, just bigger company, more into the mainstream, I guess from an underground perspective. Um, I don't get why the hell anyone would even want to be on any of that crap. I just, I just don't. Um, so I can see it both ways. I guess it just depends on what you're trying to, what you're wanting to do. So, but you know, if a band of ours, like an underground band wanted to go there, you know, I get it. Like a band that I'm a big fan of that is now on Metal Blade Records, like Entrails. Uh, they left who were they one. I know they did their second album Lee CD with Dark Descent. Maybe that was the last label they were on. I know their very first album, Tales from the Morgue, when it first came out, I can't remember what label it was on. I, uh, definitely small. Was it, was it FDA or? I'd have to look. I have the original, but I can't remember. But definitely a a much smaller label, and um, now they're on uh, Metal Blade. And I still like the shit. I like every all the in trail stuff, and I, I don't like well a bunch of fucking you know losers for going on Metal Blade. I get it. This is a business thing decision. They probably either want to make money from the band or make a living off. Like, hey, this is our passion. We want to do our band. We want to make money off at the same time. You know, I get it. So I don't like fault them for it. But um, so definitely understandable. As far as all those other labels, like Dark Descent or something, I don't know if he was he pissed when they and does he hold a grudge when he goes there? I don't know. I never asked you. Know, I never asked other labels what they think because uh, I have seen like whether it be Nuclear War now or other labels. I have seen labels. I mean, bands jump ship and they're on X label now, which is much bigger. And it's kind of like, oh, I wonder what you know so and so thinks. You know, I, I don't really know. But um, yeah, so I mean, that's kind of my thoughts. Just you know, whatever it is, what it is. Uh, sometimes kind of a bummer. I'm trying to think, was there any other bands that really jumped ship? I mean, we did other things where like maybe like High Roller did a vinyl release of a CD we did, and that was all on good good, good terms. Like I think he uh, even sent us copies. Uh, we've done that with uh, bands too, too, obviously from other labels. Like whereas, you know, we did a CD or an LP or whatever, and they did vice versa. You know, kind of like a co-release. It wasn't co-release, but you know what I mean. We did one format, they did the other. Um, I think we did. So what was it? Something? Uh, did we do? Uh, uh, Dylan over at uh, Head Split Records, he did a cassette of something we did a release of. I can't remember what it was. Uh, drawing a blank, but a, a, of a release we did, and he wanted to do the cassette version. And you know, you know, it's all good. You know, things like that. So uh, stuff like that. It's always been pretty uh, laid back on you know all friendly terms because yeah, we've been in the same boat where somebody they just like obviously relapsed. Look, they did the Mortician Records, and then 
we want, I mean, that's Mortician CDs and we did all the vinyls, you know, years later. So, you know, we've been in the same boat. So get in. So, but usually with that, you, you uh, give the label that owns the stuff some type of payment, licensing fee for us for relapse. I think they got 10% of all the pressings we did. So what did we do? I think maybe we did like a thousand LPs in the Mortician. So we sent them a hundred LPs. So, you know, they got, they got, the, they got a hundred LPs to sell in their distro for literally doing nothing. They said to kick back and fucking, uh, basically sign a contract. So, you know, I can understand why they would not do it. Definitely a good deal for them. Right. So, yeah. So that's kind of like how it goes. Yeah. With the bands jumping ship and stuff, you know, it's not, you know, no hard feelings. I mean, I can't say like if it was like a metal blade situation, say cannibal corpse left metal blade to go with whoever Sony or whatever, would it be bad blood there? I mean, been with them for fucking 30 years. It's a huge band. Maybe they take it. A, yeah. That might be a little different situation, but we've never had anything uh, of that caliber. Right. So, I mean, when it comes to that, maybe there'd be fucking, maybe Brian Segel would be fucking pissed, right? I don't know. Uh, he can, only he can answer that question, but yeah, obviously we're not doing that kind of, uh, that kind of volume. So it's a totally different thing. We're so, you know, yeah. I mean, for me, I've never, there's been nobody's ever jumped shit that I was completely pissed off about. So yeah, that pretty much is answers that question. And I'll see you guys in the next one later.